Hello, my name is Katie McGongo, and this is my lesson presentation and demonstration on community totem poles for psychology education for 14. I first created this lesson for fourth grade students, and it works across curriculums to combine social studies with language arts and art lessons. Uh, the students that I had in mind were students at a school that I've been substituting at frequently, and these students are of high and low socioeconomic status. The language proficiency of the students in the class is English, and I have not yet witnessed any other languages spoken in this class. There are a few students of native descent in the class, so I will be sure to open up the discussion to be inclusive of their family's traditions and history. It was important to me to have students in mind when designing this lesson, as I want to create lessons that appeal to the likes and interests of students. I think that this lesson would be a great thing to throw in when teaching students about different tribes and might be a fun way for native students in the classroom to share with their peers. Uh, the bulk of the content being taught here is social studies, as we'll go through the rich history of Native American people and totem poles. The standard here is the ELA standard of literacy, speaking and listening for, and the specific standard is 1D, reviewing the key ideas and coming up with their own ideas in light of the discussion. So the takeaways I can hope that the students would get is that each animal has significant meaning on a totem pole and that they might too come up with an animal with a special meaning to them. If students are knowledgeable about totem poles and the meanings that they convey, then they should be able to show that different objects on the pole convey meanings by creating their own totem poles. Students will practice interdependence and group accountability as they work in groups of three or four to make their own community totem poles. I will use continuous assessment to first check in with the students on what they already know about totem poles. I will also have students answer questions on Google Classroom after watching a short film to check for understanding as well as holding them accountable to paying attention. After the instruction, students will be asked to answer the same pre-test questions with hopes of expanding on their answers on what they learned in the lesson. The students will also create their own community totem poles and talk about them as a way of presenting what they learned. If students choose not to present their totem pole in front of the classroom, they can send in their presentation via Google Slides. I think that Google Slides would be the most effective way for students to present, but since this project does include works of art, the in-person option might work better. I do prefer the slides because each student's work is noted so that the teacher can check on participation. But I do not think that the project or lesson is on a large enough scale that peer rubrics would be necessary. But sometimes for partner projects, that's also a great way to check in on participation. Good morning, fourth grade. Today we are going to do a lesson on totem poles. We are going to begin our lesson by brainstorming what we might already know about totem poles. I'm going to ask you to get out a pen and paper and answer these two questions that I'm going to read out on your papers before we begin today. My questions are, what materials were used to construct totem poles? So if you can think about the things that they might have used to make the totem poles with and to make them out of. Their second question is what types of things did totem poles represent? So if we can think about what kind of people use totem poles, it might be easier for us to think about the kind of things that they would want to praise or place in their totem poles. In the Pacific Northwest, memories and ties that bind are embodied in one of Native America's most iconic structures, totem poles. Like wampum belts, totem poles record the history of war, kinship, and leaders. But totem poles are often the 
misunderstood. You know, the saying, low man on the totem pole doesn't really all is equally as important as the next guy, and you know, the, the guy on the bottom supporting everything else above him, so it actually seems a little backwards. The power of the pole comes from the cedar tree. Cedar is central to the lives of the native peoples of the Northwest. It is used to make clothing, storage chests, and ceremonial masks. For Kwak Wakawak carvers, Alan Hunt and Bo Dick, cedar is a portal to the past. There's a certain relationship that our people have with the cedar tree. Reconnects us with our ancestors, with our story, with our identity, and it's just really sacred to us. Each grain is a year, and you become sensitized to it the more you work at it. You feel it cutting through each year. My grandfather did that. My great grandfather did that. My great 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 grandfather did that. They all did it. I'm following their footsteps. And that's really personal. And we share that. We're following what was provided by our ancestors and the relationship that they had with the Creator. At this time, I would like you to go into our Google Classroom on your Chromebooks and pull up the questions that are marked totem pole video. Here you will find two questions, and I'd like you to take this time to go ahead and answer those questions. What things did, besides totem poles, did Native Americans use cedar for? And the second question is, why would cedar be called a portal to the past? Now we will look at a totem pole poem written by Caleb H. Coe. My family is a totem pole. My mom, the eagle, soars through the day. While my dad, the bear, says, all work, no play. My brother, the rat, mischievous and sly. And me, the deer, sad but unable to cry. All right, class, let's go over a little more information about totem poles. Totem poles do display animals that are consistent in a person or family's life. If Native American peoples belong to a certain clan, sometimes they would place that clan's animal on their totem pole. Many designs are used, which reflects the diversity between the Native American people. The totem pole is special to the group it belongs to or represents. So now I would like you to be thinking about what animal you might think is consistent in your life or represents your family. I will now break you up into groups of three or four, and each group member is going to choose one animal. You may work together, but each group member should create their own animal square out of the square paper I will hand out. When all the group members are done, we will connect our squares and make our own totem poles for each group. Now that we have all assembled our totem poles, let's head back to our desks and put together what we have learned. I will ask students to pull out the paper where they originally answered questions on totem poles. The questions were what materials were used to construct totem poles and what types of things did, do totem poles represent? 
So students here will answer the same questions again, but hopefully include what we discussed today. After students answer their questions, I will ask each group to come to the front of the room and share their totem pole, where each student will briefly describe which animal they included and why they included that. If a student or a group does not want to come to the front of the room to present, that group or that student does have the option of putting together a Google slide on their animal and why they included it, and then submitting that via Google instead.